We can then predict the behavior and then we can make better choices. Because the reality is, is these days people are making terrible choices and sadly, I am witnessing. All right, we're gonna talk about those seven things that show a man you have class. And quite frankly, this is true for men and women alike. This isn't singular to one gender. Before I start today though, I have a confession to make. And I feel like I've been thinking about this a lot lately. And I oftentimes wonder if being a realist, and I'd like to think I'm a realist. In other words, I'm sharing my perceptions, my opinions uh, from, a, from a perspective of realism. To, am I a pessimist? In other words, am I exposing the dating process in a negative light? And what I mean to say is, I recognize that human beings are rather dysfunctional. They are rather messed up. And it certainly seems that way in the dating, mating, relating process. In fact, I believe the number one emotional health issue for most humans are, I'm not good enough, I'm not lovable, and I'm not likable. And so, and I think dating triggers that like nobody's business. So I wonder if, you know, the other day, one of the, one of, uh, you, uh, the followers here asked a question, what are the odds of actually experiencing a juicy, delicious, healthy, happy relationship? And I said that the odds are rather slim. I mean, almost saying ridiculously slim. And I'm, I'm wondering if that sounds like a pessimist. Now, people are meeting all the time. They are falling in what they believe to be love. And I use the word believe to be love. And people are engaging in relationships all the time. So it's not as if people aren't forming relationships. And I'm talking about men and women in particular. So it's not that, but I also recognize that there's a lot of dysfunctionality in the dating realm. And there's a lot of humans who are riddled, riddled with childhood wounds and traumas and adult traumas that makes them rather dysfunctional in the dating process. So I ask myself, is it realistic? Am I being realistic by sounding like a pessimist? Well, my hope is you all believe, you know, my hope is that I'm looking at this from a perspective of realism. In other words, re the realism from the perspective of the fantasy that many of us were sold with. And while these days, you know, we can quote the Disney movies and the Cinderella's. I mean, that seems like such a, that seems like eons ago, but certainly movies like The Notebook and Serendipity and such makes it seem like in romantic comedy seems like, oh, it's just naturally easy to form a relationship. And yet, I, I'm going to say it's nothing easy. There is nothing easy about this process of dating, mating, or relating. There's nothing easy about the fact that we now use our devices that were never used in the past to form a relationship. And I oftentimes wonder if technology is making it worse than making it better. Now, I say that because I think there's two sides of the coin, roughly about, I, I think we are going to reach a point where 80% of all new relationships are going to happen through these devices. In other words, meeting, let me reframe that. Roughly, I believe in the near future, it's going to be roughly 80% of all new relationships are formed are going to happen through an online connection. Now, it doesn't have to be a dating app. It could be any form of online connection. It could include Facebook, it could include Instagram, it could, gosh, it could include TikTok for all I know. So I believe that that's gonna be the norm and we're already at 50% already. But because of technology, there's two sides of the coin. There's the benefit of access to people and at the same time, it's, the, it's becoming the pellet for the hamster, you know, for the mouse to grab the pellet, grab the pellet, grab the pellet. So there is a huge dysfunctionality within the process itself. And then add to that human being's dysfunctionality. So is that pessimism or is that realism? Well, interestingly enough, in the last two weeks, I've gotten Four, phone, four messages, I should say, not phone calls, but messages from clients who have worked with me in the last nine or 10 months, one of which who got engaged and she sent me a picture of her and her guy. And then another one, uh, I'm so excited, she gave me permission to share this, but she went through my coaching program and she met a really great guy and she knows the difference. And I wanna show you a picture of those two. I swear, he looks like, I think he looks like Matt, Matt LeBlanc. And she says he's told he looks like um, uh, Michael Douglas. So 
Um, great looking couple in midlife. And that's just one of four success stories I've heard in the, from my clientele just in the last two weeks. So I know that it's possible. I think it's just really important to recognize at least what I teach in my private coaching. By the way, there's a link below to schedule a discovery call with me to see if working with a coach is right for you, is I'm all about pre-qualifying your prospect, pre-qualifying your prospect. In other words, before you go on a date, ask some really important questions just to determine if you're on the same page with someone. And it's piggybacks the work that's taught by, listen, I know many of you don't like the dating site, eHarmony. But the person who started the site, Neil Warren, Neil Clark Warren, wrote a book called Two Dates, Two Dates or Less. And the idea here is he's picked out 25 key areas of compatibility. And I'm a big proponent of trying to, let's see if we're on the same page before we, we meet together. Because if you do meet and there's chemistry, there's compatibility and there's chemistry ignited, you've got a much better chance and supposedly, and again, I'm not endorsing the website, but I'm endorsing the philosophy that compatibility ignited with chemistry equals relationship success. Many of you know my relationship iceberg. I say it in almost every video merely to illustrate a point. We have all adopted this belief that chemistry equals relationship success. You're probably going, Jonathan, what does this have to do with class? I'll get to that in a moment. Trust me, I'm gonna get to that in a moment. Chemistry equals relationship success, and yet why do relate? Why are so, everybody who has this amazing chemistry? Oh my God, we had the most amazing chemistry. I've never had chemistry like this before. But we don't share the same values. Our lifestyles don't work out, and worse, I'm with somebody who's an emotional train wreck. Folks, compatibility is about shared values, blendable lifestyles, and emotional maturity. It's not just about chemistry. So. I'm here to say that it's important, that's what, coming back to the point, am I a pessimist? Am I a realist? Am I an optimist? You know, my philosophy is this, the more information we know, the better we can predict behavior. When we understand something, we can predict behavior, and when we can predict behavior, we can make better choices. Write that down, when we understand something, and I'm talking about human behavior, we can then predict the behavior and then we can make better choices. Because the reality is, is these days people are making terrible choices and sadly, I am witnessing women going on a lot of first dates that go nowhere. I'm witnessing a lot of women who have had short-lived encounters with men that don't go anywhere. And yes, because of all this, the odds of success are becoming much slimmer. So what do you wanna do to, to put the odds in your favor? start to pre-qualify your prospect. And I'm a big believer of something called radical honesty. Put your cards on the table right from the get-go. But Jonathan, every dating coach tells me that's like an interview and it's gonna scare a guy away. Look, you only scare the people that are either not capable of being in a relationship or are not ready for a relationship or that they're not attracted to you. Let me repeat that, they're not capable, they're not ready, or they're not attracted to you. So do you even want to invest time with those people? Because the reality is, is with swipe dating, you know, it's harder to feel attracted when we see nothing but garbage out there. I mean, I look at some of the, the photographs from people out there and it is absolute garbage what I see. Um, I'm trying to find something. I, I took a picture the other day. No disrespect to this person, but this was their first photograph. Like, really? You think that's going to, that's going to go, oh my God, I want to swipe on that person. You know, and that's just one example of hundreds. Let me show you another one. That's their first photograph. Look at, look at, I'm not saying you can't meet people with masks on. Thankfully, the mask mandate here in Los Angeles has been lifted. I get to go out tonight without wearing my mask. I'm so excited. So, so let's let's put better representations of ourselves. If we're going, and if 80% of people are going to be meeting this way, then put together a great representation of yourself. It's not that hard. Blurry pictures, fish, the middle finger, you know, three, 10 people in the photo, and you can't figure out who it is. I mean, this is the kind of crap we're dealing with, and we wonder why dating is so fucking dysfunctional. Maybe because garbage in is garbage out. 
All right, so let's talk about class. You know what, I looked up the definition of class. I want to read this to you because I thought it was kind of interesting. Having class. Class involves good manners, politeness, pride without showboating, empathy, humility, and an abundance of self-control. The actions of uh, class act people's actions speak louder than words. So, and I thought, okay, I could have just shared all that with you. And that was the, you know, the, the broadcast. But I'm also reflecting on people today. One of the elements of class, and this isn't one of the seven I'm going to share, is actually treating people with fucking respect. You know, because you're meeting strangers today, there's an absolute level of disrespect with people. I mean, just an absolute treating people. By the way, you are, it seems to me people are more likely to treat the grocery clerk, the valet at a, at a restaurant, or a stranger that needs their door open while walking into a, a building than the actual respect we treat by connecting people through these devices. It is, and, and by the way, let's not even get into micro ghosting and ghosting in and of itself, disappearing in communication. It is really saddens me because we think, oh, well, they're just a stranger to us. We don't know them, so we can treat them disrespectfully. And I'm partially guilty of this. So I, I'm gonna take ownership. I, I have worked very hard in the last four years to especially since Connor passed away, is to really operate with as much integrity as I'm possibly capable of doing. And foregoing bad behavior for the tougher thing, and that's stepping into, maybe by being honest with someone, it might hurt their feelings, even though, and I'm, I'm, I'm using this as an example. You know, when I'm not just that into someone, being upfront about it saying, you know, I think you're a great person. I'm just not feeling the energetic connection with us and I'm gonna disengage with communication. That to me feels like I'm in integrity now. I may, didn't, may not have done that years ago, but I'm doing my best and my invitation is for everyone else because just because they're a stranger and never see them again, I believe karma bites us in the butt. And believe me, my butt must be bitten up like a fucking uh, let's not go down that road. Like I've been eaten by alligators. Uh, <laughs> um, a lot of that is my own self um, sabotage that I'm talking about, not necessarily disrespecting others. But it's really sad how I witness men and women alike. And by the way, I know you ladies like to point the finger at guys. You like to point the finger at guys. By the way, every time you're pointing a finger, there's three fingers pointing back at you. And by the way, all the guys are pointing the finger at you ladies. I mean, it, 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 if you ladies, since my audience is predominantly women, if you spent time on men's forums, listening to them talking about women, and these men spent time on forums that you're talking about men, do you ever wonder why it's a fucking shit show out there? Because men and women aren't talking with one another. You know, one of the things I really appreciate about a, a woman named Alison Armstrong who has what's called the PAX program. She puts a hundred men and women in a room and saying, all right, let's roll up our sleeves and let's talk about the shit we're dealing with in the dating, mating and relationship realm. And you know, if it would be, and by the way, I'm so grateful that men are now following my channel. In fact, one guy is so, he's been following my channel, using my advice. And he said uh, last uh, week, uh, the other day, he's like, he's in a relationship with someone using the tech, the things that I talk about. All right, I've been rambling on. It's the 15 minute mark. Let's talk about those seven things that uh, indicate men and women have class, okay? Not women, men and women. I think one of the first things is to be respectful with respects to telephone and text communication. And it saddens me to even say this, but this fucking bullshit game of playing hard to get, taking your time to respond, not to seem too eager, not to seem like you're chasing. Fucking, I, I'm a type of person, when someone texts me, I like to respond as quick as possible so I get it off, I, I get it off my mental plate, for one. 
But the way people are treating one another is such disrespect, which is a lack of class. So here's my invitation. Will you make a, will you raise your hand on these seven things I'm sharing? And number one, start being respectful when it comes to the use of the telephone or text message, just like you would your boss. Okay. If you're going to treat your boss with respect, if, then do the same for the person you might be communicating with. And this is right from the very get-go, the first person you swipe with. And number, and a piggyback on that is, I think it's such, I can't stand women and men who abbreviate the words like you. Y-O-U, they just put the U. Or they abbreviate things because it's easier for them. You know, I, I, I just think that lacks class. So that's just me. You know, you have to judge for yourself. Maybe class for you is just manners and, and using what fork you're supposed to use at the, you know, at the dinner table. Um, you know, I could care less of what fork you use, but I do appreciate people that are respectful when it comes to the telephone and text communication. Number two, bad mouthing your ex, bad mouthing a past relationship. To me, that's low class. You know what? I don't care how bad your past relationship was. If you hyper focus on what was wrong with them and you take no ownership, taking ownership in your part is class. Bad mouthing your past relationships. And I don't care how bad you think it was. There's always two sides to a coin or a situation. So I think it just lacks class. That's Listen, everybody, this is my point of view. You don't have to agree with it. I'm just sharing with you from my perspective. Number three, I think this demonstrates so much class, is listening to the other person and acknowledging what they said. Oh, you mean, Jonathan, listening to what the other person and acknowledging what they said? Yes, that is class. Acknowledge, by the way, humans are so quick to respond instead of listen and acknowledge. And this is true right from the get-go with text communication. I can't stand people that I acknowledge, like I might say a compliment to a woman, and they don't even acknowledge that I gave them a compliment, at least a thank you or I appreciate that. But they go immediately in a blah, 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 Or it's more like this. Wah, 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 wah. I mean, this is the kind of crap we're dealing with because humans don't know how to listen and acknowledge. If you're not familiar with the book, Nonviolent Communication by Marshall Rosenberg, fucking buy this book. There's a link below to Jonathan Recommends Books and learn how to communicate better. And there's another great book I've been reading now. It's called I Hear You by Michael Sorensen. The surprising simple skills behind extraordinary relationship. This is all learning how to communicate better. Folks, if you're single looking for love, half of the problem is you. You don't know how to communicate. Most couples have terrible communication skills. By the way, here's a good book, Couples Communication Guide, and how to build trust in a relationship because what's missing today is a lot of trust because humans have terrible relationship skills. Most humans do. Listen and acknowledge communication. Number four, I think it's a lot of class when a person has done personal development, self-help, and spiritual work. Oh, is that a time for a plug for your book? Yes, it is, Jonathan. My book, What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? A Journey of Personal Development, Self-Help, and Spiritual Work. When a person loves themselves, that is so much class. And I don't mean they walk by a mirror and go, oh, look at how wonderful I am. Okay, that's Narcissus, right? Narcissus comes from Narcissus. He fell in love with his reflection. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about loving oneself to have standards and boundaries in your life so you don't, you don't give your power away to another human being. And sadly, so many of you women give your power away to men. It saddens me so much. It saddens me so much. Number five. <laughs> some of you might like this, some of you may not like this. Consumed by social media. Consu a, person, a person who isn't consumed by social media, even if it's their business. I can't stand women that are constantly on their social media accounts, their Instagram accounts, their, their, their Facebook accounts, whatever it is. I mean, and even, but it's my business. I'm supposed to be honest, my business. Well, fucker, when you're with me, 
if you if it's your business then go back to work and don't spend time with me on your social media because to me that's low class number six this is one of my favorites genuinely friendly to wait staff genuinely friendly to service staff and wait staff I love it. I, one of the first thing when I sit at a restaurant, one of the first things I do is I engage with the wait staff. I ask their name, and and when a person with, who's with me is doing the same, engaging with wait staff, and is friendly to me, that's high class. That's high brow and high class. And um, I don't know if you feel the same way. That's how I feel about people that engage with those who are serving you. And lastly, number seven, number seven, on time for a date. I am sorry, but I, my biggest pet peeve, I, I, punctuality is one of my most important values in my life. And I cannot, I, I don't think, I think in what feels like, and I'm not saying this is the number, what feels like thousands of dates and first dates in my lifetime, and that's not the actual number, but it feels that way. I would say less than 5% of the women have been on time. I'm sorry, I cannot stand tardiness because here's, and by the way, and what's worse, I had one woman, we planned a date and uh, we had a date planned and we just, I needed to like confirm the restaurant cause I had made a change and she went silent on me for two hours. And then the excuse was, one of my girlfriends was having a meltdown and I had to be on the phone with her. You know what? If she had an appointment with her boss, and I said this in my last video, she would have swam through, by the way, and her boss was gonna give her a multi-million dollar deal if she had to call and to be on time. I guarantee you her girlfriend would have been put in the back burner, but because I was a stranger, not only did she disrespect me, which is low class, she didn't show up, I mean, but people that don't show up on time, that's just, that lacks class. And you know what? I invite everyone to set their standard higher because I gotta tell you, today's dating, mating, and relating realm is lowbrow, very lowbrow. That's my opinion and I'm sticking to it. Being on time shows class. And by the way, Legitimately, people can be late. I understand that. But you know what my old boss used to tell me? Being 15 minutes early to an appointment was on time. Being on time was late. And one minute late was in, it was or after the appointment was inexcusable. I always budget. I'm always, when I go on a date, I'm always there 15 minutes early because I budget for traffic. I budget for things. And if I'm going to be late, I say it the hour or so earlier. So at least that person goes, oh, I don't have to rush at this moment because they got, they did get caught up. That to me is class. And that's the way I show up. And I invite all of you to do the same. Are you with me? Can I get an amen? <laughs> all right. Really quickly, respectful on the telephone and text communication. Do not bad mouth your past relationships. Listen and acknowledge uh, the other person's communication has done some self-love work on themselves, isn't consumed by social media, genuinely friendly to wait staff, and is on time for dates. That's my invitation for class. And I'd like to know if you feel the same way. If you do, post a comment below, post a comment in the, um, in the chat box. And we're gonna take, if you have something to share, post a comment below if you're listening to the uh, replay of this. If you want to schedule a discovery call with me, there's a link below. If you want to purchase my books, all the books I recommend, there's a link below. If you want to join my private group, if you can't afford coaching, there's a link below. If you want to follow me on Instagram, there's a link below. Uh, if you have something to share, post it. Share this with your friends. Like this video right now. I'd be truly grateful if you'd share this and like it as well. And we're gonna wrap up this video as I always do. First off, giving myself a big gigantic Jonathan Barrack of self-love. I'm gonna reach into the camera and give you a hug of love if that's okay. I'm gonna ask you to turn to someone, a pet, a teddy bear, a pillow, and give it or them a hug of love because hugs are a great source of love. And let's face it, we could all use more love in our lives. I wanna thank Leah and Jenny, Jeannie, uh, Karen, Tanya, Ivy, Athena.